Okay, let's take a look at uh, using convex lenses. Uh, and this is like the lenses we use in a lot of our light experiments. You guys have already done uh, mirrors, and so the nice part is none of that changes. The same formulas we use to analyze mirrors still can be used to analyze convex lenses as long as we interpret them slightly different. So the big difference is with mirrors, light rays would come and would bounce off uh, from whatever source we were using, but they would never go through. With lenses, light is allowed to go through and it bends as it goes through. Okay, now we still are going to analyze it kind of the same way. So what I would like to do first is just show you that your basic uh, structures that we did are still going to apply. The difference here is we have a focal length, a focal point on both sides of the lens because light can come through both sides and pass all the way through to another spot. So we have a focal point on both sides. And then 2F, I labeled that, that's like what we would label our C as, the, the radius of curvature, the center of curvature, however you want to say that. I just put as 2F because remember it's twice as far as the focal length. So I'm going to pick some numbers here. Let's take, uh, let's say this is 10 centimeters, which is going to make this 20 centimeters. Okay, and uh, I put a blue arrow here for an object. This would be like a filament that we used to use in our uh, experiments. And let's just say that is at 18 centimeters from the lens. Okay, and that would right there would be called our XO. It's the distance for our object. Okay, now let's take a look how we would analyze this. We're still going to draw a ray coming out parallel to the principal axis. Now when it hits the lens, it's actually going to bend when it hits the glass, and then it's going to bend again when it leaves the glass based on the angle and the curvature of the lens. And it gets kind of complicated to draw, so we're going to simplify it and just pretend it's hitting one spot on the inside and it's going to refract there. That's not totally accurate, but it works for simplicity's sake. So it's going to bend when it goes through the lens and it's going to end up going through the focal length, or the focal point, sorry. The other ray we're gonna draw goes, starts out going through the focal point. It's gonna hit that lens, it's gonna bend twice. Eventually it's gonna come out parallel. Okay, and my drawing here is probably slightly inaccurate. I just kinda eyeballed it a little bit here. I think 2F is gonna be maybe right about in that range. So it looks like we are gonna be just beyond it, okay? Now, when we take a look at this, all right, when we take a look at this situation, we see upside down, that means this is going to be inverted. You guys did a lot of experiments with this. You saw that image show up on the screen all the time. It is a real image. Remember, real images are images that show up on the screen. And in this case, I look at this and I go, well, my drawing, that has to be pretty accurate. It looks like it's almost the same size. I would say maybe it's just a little bigger even though it's upside down, okay? Now, uh, let's analyze the numbers and see where those things shake out. So the way we did this before, we did this equation right up here, one over the focal length, which is 10 centimeters, equals one over xi, which is the distance of the image, and we don't know that, okay? Right now, it looks like it's a little beyond 20. Okay, so if this is 2f, that's gonna be a 20 centimeters right there. Looks like it's a little past that, but we'll see if, how accurate my drawing really is. And then 1 over XO, and we know XO right over here is 18 centimeters. So I'm going to do a little mechanics on this and just see if I can get a number out of it. This is 0 0.1. That I don't know. And this is 0 0.055. So if I move this over to the other side by subtracting it, I get 0 0.045 equals 1 over XI. And then I invert both of these, take the reciprocal, and I get xi is going to be 22.2 centimeters. Okay, which, yeah, 22.2, it looks like that could be it. It looks like it's at least in the ballpark. Okay, so that right there is my xi. I've got the distance of the image. Now, the other thing I can do is use my magnification equation. I don't have a magnification value, but I do have, let's see, a negative xi, which is 22.2, over xo, which is 18, there's that distance ratio, equals hi over the height, and let's say this was, I'm just going to make up a number, how about 3 centimeters tall? So our object was 3 centimeters, put that right there. If we cross multiply and solve for this, we're going to get the height of the image equal to negative 3.7 centimeters. Now, by doing that, let's take a look here. This, is, this means something, okay? A negative height means this is upside down, negative 3.7, so it fits the drawing. 
3.7 is a little bit bigger than 3, so it seems to fit the size. Uh, and this right here tells us our location. It seems to fit the location. So these things all seem to work together. Okay, I don't think you're going to struggle too much with this since we did it all with mirrors. It's just slightly different now that the light can pass through instead of bounce off and go the other way. Okay, and those of you who got the filament from the bulb close to the focal length of those lenses, which mostly the focal lengths were about 10 centimeters on those lenses, you got it kind of close to that but not quite there. You saw that you got an image here, and the closer this came, the bigger that image was. Sometimes it was a giant image you could project onto the wall. Okay, in a future video, we're going to take a look at what happens if we move this way back here, and what happens if we move this way, way close.